Welcome to this Teaching with Tech episode. I'm Rachel Madel, joined by Chris Bouguet. Hey, Chris, how are you? All right, Rachel, how's it going? I'm excited for today's episode. We are partnering with Double Time Docs, which is a software that can help you write faster assessment reports. So what's better than saving time on assessment reports? I don't know, not much. I'm really excited for today's episode. Really, I think of this as a money saver, right? Because if you can save time in writing, that means more clients, that means more people that you can help, it means more free time for yourself, uh, and time equals money, right? That old that old expression still holds true. Um, so speeding it up, uh, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, and honestly, I like sometimes dread new referrals only because I know I'm going to have to write an assessment report. And I'm like, no, like I can't do it. Um, especially with AAC, I feel like sometimes my reports are 25, 30 pages long. Um, and so it's just anything that can save us time while we're report writing at, in general, um, I think is something that we, we definitely need to, to, to explore. All right. So shall we take, go take a look and uh, let everyone know what Double Time Docs is all about? Absolutely. Let's dive in. And I'm really excited about this because essentially what Double Time Docs has done is taken all of the, the speech and language assessment reports and they've even built out a section on AAC, which we're going to, you know, of course, go into detail about, um, but it essentially have created a bunch of multiple choice questions, check boxes, and fill in the blanks so that we're able to expedite the report writing process. So here we are logged in at doubletimedocs.com um, and you'll note over here that uh, you sign in like any other place. There's a, there's a sign in where you, you put your, you, know, you sign up like you do any other subscription service. Uh, and that's how this is exploding later uh, because of course you can sign up and get 30 days for free. Um, and in fact, we have a special code that we're going to give you at the end to get you um, a little extra, some, some credits that we're going to talk about. So. Right, Rachel, you go up here, you sign in, and then uh, this is where your subscription information is, your account information, and then over here are some quick tips. Should we take a look at those first? Yes, I love the quick tips. I, anything that can make it faster, even, even using the software, they have tips on how to make your entire assessment faster, which I love. So what they're suggesting is that, okay, before you're coming to write the report, you're going to do the assessment. And when you're going to do the assessment, if you know what your report looks like, you know what kind of questions you want to ask. So they have given some this teacher comments and caregiver comments form, which I've pre-downloaded, so we don't have to wait for them to, to load. This is um, one of them. This is the teacher questions and teacher comments. And so essentially you can either give this to a teacher or this can be your guide when you're having the interview with the, uh, the educators that you're working with, talking about the different parts of the student's day uh, when you're doing the assessment. Is there anything particular you want me to call out here, Rachel? Well, I think that just generally speaking, I know when I write my assessment reports, it's kind of a hot mess. I'm like, you know, frantically doodling, not doodling, but that implies that I'm like, you know, just like drawing for fun. Um, I'm writing on the, you know, the template that I'm using if I'm doing any type of standardized assessments. Um, I'm writing on a piece of paper. And so I love this idea of like really getting laser focused and having all of your notes appear, you know, not only in the same place, but also in order of when you're writing because we've all like paged through multiple pages of notes um, as we're writing up our reports and it just you know obviously takes a lot of time to do that so i love that it's all in one place and it's in order the same order that you're going to follow as you're filling out your template on double time docs can I say that I know from experience what has happened to me when doing an evaluation or an assessment is I've left afterwards and gone, oh my gosh, I forgot to ask about the blah, 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 because I was just scr scratching stuff down on a piece of paper, as opposed to following some sort of outline that would kind of forces me to fill in everything. So I really love that they have this for, uh, for, for us as veterans, but also if you were a brand new clinician, this really helps you think, well, what do I need to include, right? Um, if you're a first timer, this would be perfect. Now, the other one is caregiver comments. So come here, caregiver comments, um, which is very similar uh, to the teacher ones, but it's just slightly different. You know, here you have the medical history, supports the child uses in different environments and, and so on, uh, getting that different perspective when, so that everyone has their, their voice in the report. So some of the other uh, quick tips that I really appreciate, um, it says, and this is really important because this 
software is very comprehensive. If you don't answer a question, it won't show up on the report. And so, you know, if there's something that's not applicable to your student, just skip it um, and it won't show up on the report. You only need to fill out the things that actually apply to the student that you've assessed. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have an AAC user, you can skip the AAC portion. It's not going to show up on your final report. The other thing is when we're going through and using the comment boxes, just making sure that you write in complete sentences because that's exactly how it's going to be generated on the report. And so, um, you know, parent reported dot, 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 um, just making sure that you're not just writing the notes, that you're writing in complete sentences because it will generate into a written paragraph. Mm -hmm. We're going to show that where uh, coming, coming right up is as you're filling stuff out, hitting the save and preview button so that you can see what it's going to look like in the final report, which of course you'll get a feel for after you've done it once or twice. Yep. Awesome. Chris, so should we start like going to fill out this assessment mm -hmm. report? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So right here is where uh, if you click on my docs, this is where it takes you to kind of the list of the docs. And uh, for the purposes of this, re um, this recording and for this uh, Teaching with Tech episode, we have uh, a fake student here named Jason. Uh, we're going to look at Jason. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to go to edit. And some of this has been pre-filled out just so you're not watching us fill out a report. Nothing, you know, can you imagine <laughs> watching a video filling out a report? So, but instead it's going to be us talking about the different parts, and maybe filling a little bit out. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So it starts with general information. And of course, this has got the background information. There's Jason and Vor, he's, Vor, he's, you know who that is, right? Jason Voorhees. Yes. No. That's, that I don't. <laughs> Voorhees is actually, um, Voorhees is a place in New Jersey, actually, right outside oh. of Philly. That's what okay. I thought of first. <laughs> Jason Voorhees is Jason from the Friday the 13th movies. I had a feeling that's what you were going to say. It was going to be some horror reference that I wasn't, that was going to totally go over my head because I'm really terrified of, of horror movies. <laughs> um, so Jason is a male. Here's his birth date. It, of course, figures out the chronological age. Which I love that because I still use age calculators um, because I'm really bad at calculating that on my own. So the fact that it generates that, also a huge time saver for me. He does not go to Lake Ridge. That's a mistake. He goes to Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> there we go. Fix that. Okay. And then here's the date of the evaluation and then who the evaluator is. In this case, it's, it's another Jason. Jason Gonzalez is doing the report. This is where, of course, you'd fill in your own name, Chris Bouguet, Rachel Madel, whatever your mm -hmm. name is, right? Um, so can I hit the save preview now yeah. and, and show? Okay, hold on. Let me hit save preview. This takes you to kind of what the report looks like, and you'll note that it fills in this table. Now, there's more stuff that has been pre-filled, and that's why you're seeing even more of the report right now. But this is what we just filled out, and this is now going to be the heading of your report. And I don't know about you, Chris, but I struggle with the, the tables and the charts in my reports. They always, like, have to be, like, fixed and, like, like I feel like I'm constantly trying to, like, fine-tune them because I, I put something in and then it goes on to another, like, you know, uh, line. And so even this, I feel like is such a great time saver, just that it like fills it out for you. Mm -hmm. And did you notice if I made a mistake? Oh no, I, when I'm looking at my preview, it's not um, Camp Crystal Lake, it's Camp Crystal's Lake. Well, I can click right there and it takes me right back to where I was in the report. So I can make the change if I need to, but you know, cause sometimes, you know, it happens, you make a mistake. So let's take a look at the reason for evaluation. Um, standard, use a custom purpose that you can type in your own stuff here. Uh, there's the type of evaluation. Is it initial? Is it a reeval? Is you doing something supplemental? Are you doing an AAC evaluation, which we happen to know is kind of a new feature that's coming to Double Time Docs because we've been working with them to, to, to kind of get it created, right? Yep. We've been, yeah, helping them build out this portion because we knew that our listeners would want the AAC portion um, because we know a lot of you guys are doing AAC assessments and we want to make that process easier for you guys. So there's the reason for the evaluation uh, and then evaluation criteria. So here we talk about the modes of communication, whether the student's verbal or do they use sign. In this case, Jason Voorhees uses pictures and gestures and uh, Jason Voorhees actually doesn't talk in any of the movies, right? So he could use Proloquo uh, iPad with, oh, there's a Proloquo to go, right? Um, 
Cool. Anything else to say about that, Rachel? No, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. I'd say that, um, that I love the save and preview feature because you're able to kind of see what it would look like in the actual doc, which by the way, at the end of all of this, it generates a Word document. So your report will be self-generated after you go through, you know, filling all these boxes and check boxes and fill in the blanks. Um, but it's nice to kind of see what it's going to look like in the report. So I love mm -hmm. the save and preview feature. Now, notice here how this says iPad with Prolo Quo, but it says underneath student uses blank as a mode of communication. So um, this would be this would be a perfect thing that I want to go check out in the save and preview. How does it actually look in the report? Does it come out as an incomplete sentence or do I need to put it as a complete sentence? Let's go take a look. So there's the reason for the evaluation. Um, look at that. He uses iPad with Prolo Quo as mode of communication. See how that filled that in? And I love how it highlights the exact section that you're working on, right? So you know exactly where it is. You don't have to like scroll. It just, it's highlighted and you can just make sure it looks good and keep on keeping on. So there we go. I just made it a little update because I, I wanted to throw the, the article Anne in there. He uses an iPad with Prolo Quo to go as a mode of communication. Perfect, right? Love. Um, love that, right? It's in, goes right back to where we were. Uh, and so there's, oh my goodness, what is all of this, Rachel? I, it's these are some of the things. You've hit the jackpot, Chris. <laughs> this is the jackpot right here. Okay, so what's an assessment you use? Maybe not even with AAC, just in general. Let's talk about one. Um, how about the Goldman Fristow? I feel like that's the, the, the Arctic test that everyone at least has given at least once. Yeah, um, oh yeah. And so here's a place where it gives you a place to put in the raw score, the standard score, all this information into these different boxes. So when you fill it out, uh, it will populate it over in the report, right? Mm -hmm. what, 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 should I, what are some numbers? What, what is Jason's uh, total raw score, Rachel? Mm, I don't know. If he's, if he's not, maybe with Golden Frisco wasn't their, the best choice because if he's, if he's not speaking, then yeah, we, right, right. we got a really low standardized test score. Maybe we should pick a, a vocabulary test or something. Okay. Okay. How about the preschool language scale? Okay. That works. All right. What would be an auditory comprehension standard score? Let's say, yeah, maybe 86. Maybe say, let's say Jason has pretty high receptive language or average. Yeah. Okay. And so we could say he's in the, what, 90th percentile? Great. For AAC specific right. reasons, we have the communication matrix, which is awesome, the TASP, uh, the DAG2, the, um, uh, the AAC communication profile, also mm -hmm. AAC Genie, which is an app that I know a lot of clinicians, including myself, use um, as a way to test for visual discrimination, visual scanning. Um, it's an app on the iPad that's pretty uh, useful. And if there's something that you don't see here that you'd want to right over here is a support and feedback feature where you can write them and say hey i would really like i have an idea i would really like this test can you please add this test and i know uh that they are super responsive because we have been having emails back and forth with them um and uh they're they're on it so if you're like i use this all the time let them know they'll add it they are on it. Honestly, I like the other day I was like, oh, what about this one? And I literally sent them an email and I see it on the list now. So um, they're really wonderful uh, to, to work with and are really receptive. They want to keep building this out, especially because the AAC portion is a new, um, it's a new area for them um, that they're expanding to. And so if you guys have suggestions while you're using your free trial um, or you've signed up for the software, um, definitely reach out to them because they're very interested in building out their software to support your ideas and your needs as a clinician. Absolutely. All right. So I was just scrolling there as we were talking, looking at some of the other options. Um, here is social development history, uh, including that caregiver interview, which we looked at earlier, that Word doc. This is where you take that information and you can basically copy and paste it over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could be actually even filling it out here, like if you were, because this is web-based, so you could be doing it you know, on an iPad or a tablet? You know, I, I was thinking about that because I would love, because part of it too, like you said, I'm always in an assessment. I come, you know, back to my office or back home and I'm like starting to write the report up and I think, oh, 
I forgot to ask that. Mm -hmm. And so wouldn't it be cool, um, assuming you had internet access, um, to just pull your laptop up, right? And go through these in, in real time and mm -hmm. fill them out as you're going along, um, especially for the things like, you know, developmental history and all of those things that I feel like sometimes I don't always remember to ask all those questions. I'm more interested in like jumping to like what I'm really totally. interested in, which is the communication piece, right? Yeah, me too. i so guilty of that as well. As you guys can see, there's tons and tons of different areas that are built in. Um, I know a lot of you guys um, do AAC assessments, but you also probably do speech and language assessments. Um, you know, sometimes I am doing AAC only. Sometimes I'm doing speech and language and AAC. So it's nice because you can choose what you want to include. Um, so if you're doing a full, you know, speech and language assessment and an AAC assessment, it can be included all in the same report. Um, it's just you know, you have to figure out what sections of the software you're going to fill out um, that are applicable applicable to your, your assessment, and they do the rest. Now, I think too, Rachel, that where we, of course, are looking at the speech language, but there's also an occupational therapy and physical therapy uh, templates as well. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. So the creators of this are actually are, uh, is an OT, an occupational therapist, and they have expanded to include PTs and speech. Um, you know, we all work so closely with one another and have, you know, similar, similar things that we're assessing when we're doing these. Um, but it's really cool to see the speech therapy sections that have really, you know, developed over time because, just the, just the assessments alone, having all of those different standardized assessments to choose from and just so easily plug in the information uh, is so valuable and useful. Again, I said this earlier, but I'll say it again. As a new clinician, this is something I would really be looking at. Who I'm trying to figure out my, my flow, you know? And of course, you can, you can always teach an old dog new tricks, right? If you have a flow, you can come back and say, well, this makes, again, it saves me so much time. But this is a great way to learn all, everything you need to know right? These are all the questions you should be asking. Um, and if there's other questions, like I said, they'll, they'll add them in. But uh, when you don't know what you don't know, this is a template that helps you fill out what you don't know. Yeah. And I have to say that my assessment reports have definitely evolved over time and they're never, they're not static, right? I just a couple weeks ago, I actually was reading another AAC assessment report from uh, one of my clients and I thought, oh, I've never thought to include that. I forget exactly what the specific thing was, but I hadn't thought to include that in my reports. And I literally like copy and pasted it and, you know, made it my own and put it into my report as something to, so that next time I do a report, I report on that. Um, mm -hmm. It was something pretty simple, but I think that this is such a comprehensive um, tool and it includes lots of different sections that, you know, you can choose to include or you don't have to, but at least you're able to see um, and you can kind of build out your assessment assessment reports over time. Look at this. I really love this question, this testing environment question, because this helps you know what the environment is like. And that is, that is something that is often left out of reports. I just love that that's there, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think it's really important when we're thinking about assessments, it's, it's especially with kids with complex communication needs, it's so dependent on so many variables. Oftentimes these kids are medically fragile. So, you know, how are they feeling that day? Um, you know, they oftentimes have sensory things going on. So, you know, what's the sensory situation like? Um, what's the motivation? Are they hungry? Are they full? Are they, you know, what are they motivated by? Um, these things are all so important with all kids, but especially our kids who, you know, maybe aren't um, as apt to perform the things that we need them to, to show us. And so I think that, you know, taking these things into, these things into consideration, um, I've talked about it on the podcast before, but, you know, really priming kids for success. So preparing uh, parents ahead of time on the things that um, maybe they can, you know, hide certain toys the day before or not give access to certain treats so that they're extra special when you bring them out. Um, these are all strategies that you can use to help students perform optimally during your assessment. So right here, what we're looking at is not currently live, right? Uh, we have the secret secret password to get into the, yes. the staging area in the background, um, and then a special password beyond that to get you, so you can't just copy the email that, or the URL that's up there at the top of the screen. Um, 
because they're working on this part, which is this augmentative and alternative assessment portion. Uh, and this is where we're giving some feedback. So what you're about to see here in this video might change a little bit, uh, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, so this is what we got. We got a method of data collection, communication partners. Um, I love the other boxes so that if they, like we knew we couldn't think of everything, so fill in that. Um, communicative functions or environments. Yeah, this is really comprehensive. Honestly, I went through it and I was like, wow, like, you know, obviously I write a lot of these things in my reports, but it's just like to see it all and to like scroll and be like, wow, there's a lot that goes into these AAC assessments. Um, and so they really did a great job at Double Time Docs as uh, expanding this um, to really think about every situation. And um, it's such a time saver to be able to just like click on these things. Um, and I love the idea, again, circling back, if you can do this in real time, like how much time you're saving if you're able to just go through this as you're doing the assessment. You're not going to be able to do everything, obviously, but a lot of this I'm thinking you can fill out. Instead of taking notes, you can literally just fill it out on the templates. Yeah, I think it would be almost impossible to make some sort of uh, thing like Double Time Docs here be work for every single situation ever, you know? I mean, with this, with this just too much diversity. Uh, so, but right here, you can get pretty close. You know, you get the, the I've said it before, uh, Double Time Docs, I think, gets you on the green and close to the hole, but you, and it gives you the report that you can go back at and add little details. Uh, so for instance, here, you might say direct selection, uh, the student, what's the physical access? You use both hands um, with direct, they use the right hand, but then in the final report, you might say with tremors or uh, with such an accuracy, like it's, mm -hmm. you're so close there. And of course, like I said before, they'll, they're willing to give, uh, take feedback. There, you can add the comments right here too, if yep. you wanted. Um, and I think that's so, one of the biggest values, right? Is that you can add, you have that comment section to expand on the checkboxes, right? So if you have something additional to say, that's the that's where you add the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so here is where we've talked a little bit. We're, we're they're thinking we we can help them a little bit with uh, it says AAC device trials, and you see they're trying to put some uh, devices in here, but we know that's there's <laughs> there's literally thousands of different devices out there. So uh, it's really hard. But I mean, these are some of the apps that are out there, right? Um, so it's a start. It's a start. Yeah, no, and it's a, it's a great start. I mean, there's, there's so many different tools, um, but they're continuing to expand over time, um, which is really great. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see it as it kind of goes through different iterations. Um, they add more information. Rachel, because I work in the public school, I don't necessarily have to live by this rule, but you, you as in private practice, if you're doing an evaluation um, or if you're trying to get Medicaid funding, um, right, you need uh, like th you need to have tried three things. Uh, is that right? And yes. so that's why they tried to build this out where here's the AAC device trials. Well, we tried Pex, or we tried Proloquo, or we tried GoTalk, and that's why it says first device. But then this whole section is repeated. You'll see second device and third device. Look, here's the pros of this device and the cons, maybe your, your evidence of why it's working or not working. And then the same thing again for the second device and third device. So it's a way to, um, uh, to again, look at, com uh, compare three different things. Yep. Yeah, and it also goes into the justifications as to why certain things are needed or necessary, um, different mm -hmm. features um, that you're looking at for a student. And so that all goes back to, yeah, when you're trying to get either a device funded, um, you typically need those justifications. Um, even for some of the school districts, like there's a lot of things that you need for school districts in LA, for example. Um, you need to justify why you're making the recommendations that you're making. So. Um, yeah, they, they've done a really good job of including all of that really important information. Right. Should, we, should, we, should we save our report and see what happens? Should we download it? Sure. Well, let's, before we do that, let's just look at the other category, even if we oh, don't yeah. scroll through all of them. I know when I was looking at this thinking, you know, they, they were looking for feedback too. What else? I was like, oh, where's the pragmatic functions? I want to make sure that's up there. There it is. There's pragmatics is right here, right? Articulation, phonology, feeding and swallowing, voice, uh, uh, doing kind of the oral exam. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's the summary and recommendations portion where you can kind of write up what, uh, what, what your summary is. What, what, you, what are you recommending? 
Uh, here's your goals and eligibility statement. Okay, so you feel like we're done? We've written it up? I We've feel like, a- yeah, I think that I'd love to see what this looks like mm-hmm. generated Jason, for us. Jason's in good hands here. We, um, so we're going to hit save, right, just to make sure it's saved. And then, okay, so this is the thing. Once you download the doc, right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download it, right? Yep. That's what you want me to do, right, Rachel? Yes, I do. Please download because it. once I download it, I can't go back and edit it. Uh, it's a one-time thing. So make sure you, that's why you do the save and preview and get it exactly how you want it and look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you download it, you can't go back and edit it. Um, so. Right. And we're going to, in a second, go over, you know, kind of how the pricing structure is set up, but essentially you get doc credits. And so, you know, you can't keep going back and changing, you know, things like that. You, you're able to edit it, um, but you don't want to download it until you feel like good about mm-hmm. what it is. Of course, you can then edit it in the Word document form. So it's not like it's locked in stone. Um, but yes, you have to make sure you know that it's solid before you download it. Because that, that button is very close to the save and preview button, they've added another screen here like, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Because once you do it, you can't go back. So nope, I'm done editing. Take, uh, or I'm not done editing. I'm here. I understand. Download my report and lock my doc. So Jason Voorhees, I've got my report. Let me download it. Uh-huh. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to open it. And let's see what it looks like. Now, this is a place where you could go back uh, and add pictures, right? If you had a picture of a, you know, uh, a certain positioning or pictures of a uh, particular layout of of an app, you know, you could write something has a certain grid size, but it's also nice to show a picture of it. Um, This is where you can add that in, make any final edits. I have tons of visuals. (laughs) I have tons of visuals in my AAC assessment reports just because I feel like it's so much easier to see it. And I don't have to describe it as much if I just show a picture of it. So oftentimes I will take screenshots from the systems that I'm trialing. Looks good, Chris. Check it Doesn't out. It? And we, of course, didn't fill out all the things necessarily that we would have because we, you know, in an effort to save time, we kind of wanted to show you guys the whole capacity. But you can see it just breaks it all down, puts beautiful tables, mm-hmm. charts. Super comprehensive. Um Look at that. It's great. Love it. You add your signature and you're done. Done. Cool, right? cool. I love it. Saved us so much time. Look how fast we wrote a report. We wrote it in 30 minutes. <laughs> right. Right. All right. So let's look at um, the pricing structure. Well, we know that it is a $5 subscription, right? Yes. $5 per month. You, um, and then you have to uh, get doc credits, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's $7 per doc credit. If you, oh. and you can purchase, so it says $7 each when you purchase up to 10, $6 each when you purchase 11 or more. So you get, you get a free, the free trial includes a dot credit, which is a $7 value. So I think it's $7 per dot credit, but if you buy in bulk, it's less than that. And the nice thing is you're able to, um, you're able to try this for, for 30 days. So you can try it out, do an assessment um, and see if you like it before you have to pay anything, which is really nice. And our listeners actually get a free doc credit if they put in the code TWT2020. So if you are a listener of this podcast, you can have a free doc credit for Talking With Tech um, to kind of check it out. And um, if you like what you see, you'll get that doc credit for us from us. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to note some of these FAQs. That's why I jumped over here to show people is that um, do doc credits expire? No, doc credits never expire. They roll over from month to month. So uh, you don't have to worry about, well, I didn't use it this month. It's okay. You, you know, We know that there's a ebb and flow. They understand there's ebb and flow sometimes when you get lots of assessments and sometimes it's a little bit dry. Uh, that's okay. You, you've purchased the credits. They'll, they'll never go away. Um, they talk about the... the time limit here once you started a doc you have 45 days to to kind of finish it and and uh and then download it um but after the 45 days you can continue to of course edit the word document you that's it's yours right it's down and downloaded in word mm-hmm. can you download more than one at a time nope you do one at a time you're you gonna say rachel 
Well, I was going to mention that they have team pricing. So I know a lot of our listeners are working in the school districts and a lot of school districts now have kind of templates that they like to follow. And so what I think would be really cool is that if you've got your entire, you know, district or speech team to have access to something like this and you can build out, um, you know, kind of a template within this software. And so um, you can just contact Double Time Docs at info at doubletimedocs.com and you can get some information on discounted pricing for teams, which I think is really cool. I know one of the things that uh, when I first looked at this, I thought, okay, it's going to be a big thing. Everyone asks, what about FERPA? Uh, you know, we're putting in student information into something. And so, of course, they have a privacy policy that you can look up and they're all FERPA compliant. And, and of course, we wouldn't share anything that wasn't like that. So, um, so you can see here's their whole uh, privacy policy is that, um, it's, like I said, it's compliant. I love it. I love it. The one other thing that's really cool that we'll mention, you get a $10 gift card if you write a review. So if you use this and you love it, $10 gift card. Who doesn't love a gift card, Chris? All right. Well, so is there anything else to say about Double Time Docs, Rachel? I don't think so. I mean, I think that it was, uh, this was an awesome episode and I'm really excited to start using this in my own practice because I feel like I need to save some time. So you save some time report writing. So if you check out Double Time Docs, let us know. It's doubletimedocs.com. Um, let us know how it goes for you and what kind of feedback you, you could give us and give them. And we hope you enjoy it and hope it saves you time as well. So for Talking With Tech, I'm Rachel Madel, joined by Chris Bouquet. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we will talk to you guys next week. 